This excerpt was taken from a full and bloom interview with Metal Church guitarist Kurt Vanderhoof, originally published as a print interview. It was not intended to be part of the podcast. You had a band called Lude? Was it D-Lude or Lude? Lude. Okay. The Lude, yeah. Yeah, the Lude. That was my first real band. We were a first generation punk rock band out of Seattle. And you guys actually opened for uh, the Ramones, right? Yep, a couple times. Yep. Any memories sort of stand out from that? Oh, yeah. I was a kid. I was blown away. I was like, well, I, you know, just like thrust into the whole thing. Even though it was punk rock, it was still real. You know, it was all originals, and we were playing real gigs, and we were playing with the Ramones. So I, all I remember is just being freaked out. <laughs> Sounds bad. It just 
captured such a moment in time, and I just remember the energy going on in that, you know, because we were rehearsed like crazy, we were tight, we knew what we were doing musically and just playing live, and we just went in and totally, totally worked translating that onto vinyl, you know, onto tape. You know, and so, I mean, that was, you know, I look back and just go, wow, you know, capturing lightning in a bottle only happens once, you know. <laughs> to me, I never thought that it uh, sounds terrible. You can't, you don't, you think that when you listen back to it? Oh, when I listen to it, when I listen to it sonically and technically and all those things from an engineering standpoint, it sounds really bad, but it doesn't matter because all of that's overshadowed by just the way it was played. Honestly, you know I mean? honestly, yeah, if you look so. at the... All the people that released albums, I mean, that's 83 when you record that? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the same time as, like, Kill 'Em All, right? Right, 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 yeah. exactly. I mean, yeah, so, I mean, it's not, I mean, for that time, it was fine. But, you know, again, kind of knowing what I know now. And compared to The Dark, I thought The Dark was, um... Oh, uh, yeah, the songs, I love that record, but I hate the way it sounds. Do you really? It's all samples. All the drums are all, you know, triggered and sampled are pretty, we actually had a producer on that one. He was a great guy, and I love Mark to death, but, you know, it was the thing to do to use the triggering and all that kind of stuff, and it was just overproduced. So that's why we won't, that's why we only got the blessing, you know, going back to being very raw. I wore the dark out, though. I tell you, brother, it didn't matter to me. I mean, to me, that's the... great, man. That, that's cool. You know, that, that's cool. That you know, it, see, those are things that you see, and I'm sure you know that when you're in it and you're making it yourself, you know, and you're listening to it like that, you all you hear is stuff wrong with it. You know? Right. You're so sure. Worried about it. You know, it's my new show. How long is the uh, self-titled album out before you guys get picked up by Electra? Oh, okay, about three, four months, five months, something like that. Wow. So in that time. <laughs> You were able to sell 70,000 copies, and that's, I'm assuming, just all over the U.S. and even Europe. I know you guys have done some little demos and stuff, so people knew of you, right? Right, right, exactly. I mean, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> that's oh, yeah, yeah, looking back at the time, you know, looking at the way things have changed and the way things are now, absolutely. Does Electra remaster the record, or they just put it out just as is? No, they put it out as is. Okay, and then you guys just immediately hit the road? Do they hook you up on a tour? Or? Oh, yeah, we, we went out on our own. We, you know, we did all the same shows with Anthrax, a lot of shows with them, and, uh, you know, then we hit the road on our own, we just started hitting the road, you know, did what, did what bands do. What was the biggest selling album? Was it The Dark, or was it Blessing in Disguise? Blessing in Disguise, we almost went gold on that, but it was 480,000 plus. Well, surely it's oh. gold by now, right? Oh, yeah, that's another thing, too, trying to get that information now, is like, yeah, like, trying to get, you know, terrorist information, you know, it's <laughs> like, you can't get a hold of, they don't return your call, they don't have records. to do the dark. Do you remember what the budget was for that record? Yeah, I think it was like 60000 70000 something like that. And how long yeah, did it? And, and go ahead. We did it in three months. Three months. So that's like, oh, I see how you do it. The big, I see how the big boys do it now. And then, you know, there's a, you know, we're in debt 60000 and the videos are 30000 and then the tour support, you know, so we're in debt a quarter million dollars and then you only pay it back after your minimal two or three fucking crappy percent that you get, you know, so you never see any money unless it's an advance. I always thought that was just absurd when I uh, found that out, that it's like, oh, they expect you to pay it back on your 50 cents to a dollar or whatever you're making per record. Oh, God, yeah, it's 50 cents. Oh, God, maybe you make 10 cents. You know, it's just, but yeah, it was just completely, completely, you know, yeah, it's a complete sham. Any moments stand out from those uh, studio sessions? Oh, God, just learning. I, for me, it was just learning and tons and tons about making records and seeing how it was done and just fascinated with it. You know, learned an awful lot from Mark Dodson. And uh, just really, that's where it really kicked in for me going, okay, this is where, you know, this is where my heart really is. I mean, I love playing live, always did, even when I left the band. Love playing live, but living on the road for three and a half months. You know, there's a lot of time to kill for just to play for an hour every day. You know, they have a party and they're saying, I just got bored. You know, I got bored thinking, man, I could be so much more productive and be much more creative and get a lot more done. And, you know, and I, you know, I partied my brains out and had kind of had enough of that, you know, pretty quickly. And we're like, okay, I don't really want to do this all the time. Right. You know, so I'd rather go start building my own studio and started learning and just started digging into, you know, that part of things. 
Rob's, you're jumping ship pretty quick after the record's done. After the Metallica tour. After the Metallica tour, you're ready to go. And then how yeah. soon after does David leave? Uh, he got fired. Yeah. So it was uh, pretty much, they went out and did some more touring with a replacement and stuff, and they just got fed up with his drug habit. Oh, okay. It was something that I stopped coming to. That was another thing that kind of let me out. You know, the drugs and the party were starting to get the best of some of, for some of the guys, not everybody. So, yeah, they, you know, it, you know it, it, when you fire your singer, it tells you how bad it got. I mean, you fire your lead singer when the band is, you know, just on our way, completely skyrocket. That's my favorite lineup is uh, with you guys, with, um, you know, with David Wayne singing. And uh, right, right. I, I just thought, what in the world? But I, I didn't know. There's really not a lot out there that's saying uh, any reason. I just feel like you guys would have even been uh, bigger. Oh, without a doubt. There's no, there, you know, the thing that killed Metal Search was the lineup changes. But, you know, that's just, a, for us, that's just the way things worked out. Yeah. You know, people are like, I think I should have been here. And I thought, well, yeah, if we could have stayed together, you know, we absolutely would have been <laughs> but it was just we're, we're that band <laughs> we just yeah. have the tumultuous history